In the previous video, we talked about some of the causes of brain fog or foggy brain. And now I want to talk about some of the solutions. And remember, brain fog is characterized by difficulty concentrating, memory issues, mental fatigue, and a lack of mental clarity. And they're caused by a lot of things that we talked about earlier. And now I want to talk about some ways that you can um, really help this issue without a medical diagnosis, although that's many times needed if you if you feel it's severe or you know have a family member that's really having some cognitive issues and has foggy brain or um, severe issues remembering things and stuff, they need to be evaluated by a specialist. But if we just start to feel like, oh, we just can't concentrate and we got to the store and didn't remember how we got there and, and we just can't you know, you want to shake your head because you just can't think straight. There are a lot of things that we can do. And so this is some solutions. One, again, is to stay hydrated. Dehydration can impair cognitive function. So drink an adequate amount of water throughout the day and stay hydrated. Again, what's my favorite saying? Take your weight, divide it by two. That's the number of ounces. At least work towards that goal. That might be way more than what you've ever been drinking, but work towards that. And drink most of it in the morning and up to noon and early afternoon afternoon so that you don't have to get up during the night to, to urinate. Get adequate sleep. Ensure you're getting enough quality sleep. Aim for seven to nine hours of sleep per night because sleep deprives, um, sleep deprivation can contribute to brain fog. Manage your stress. Stress can cloud our thinking and practice stress reduction techniques such as meditation, deep breathing exercises, mindfulness, yoga. One of the exercises that I teach my clients is the, four, the box breathing. So you breathe in for four, hold it for four, let it out for four, and hold it for four. And you do this at least five times. It really calms you down. I did that a lot when I during COVID when I had to go into stores and things. I was kind of nervous. You know, in the beginning, it was like we didn't know what was going to happen. And so I would sit in my car and I would breathe in for four, hold it, out, and hold it. Count to four, hold it, let it out, four. So in for four, hold it for four, out for four hold it for four. It's amazing how that can help. It's just the little things. I also teach five, five, seven breathing. You got breathe in for five, hold for five and let out for seven. That's a deeper one. And I recommend you not do that when you're driving because some people do get lightheaded, but it really brings down your heart rate. It brings down your blood pressure. I recommend for any of you that have the white coat syndrome, we call it when you get really nervous before you go to a doctor, or a dentist or anything, and your blood pressure goes way up, do 557. Five, it's amazing how it really helps you calm down. Try to meditate. Just close your eyes and think. try to think of nothing. Easier said than done. But it takes practice, and it does work. So you can really try a lot of those. Regular exercise again. Aim for what we say is 150 minutes of moderate intense aerobic exercise per week. And so if you can, you know, work out even five days a week, it's really important. I try to walk an hour a day. It doesn't always happen, but I try to get in my 10,000 steps. I monitor it on my little watch and today I got 5,000. So some days it just doesn't happen, but a lot of times it can. A balanced diet, again, is another one we talked about. Consume a well-balanced diet rich of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, and healthy fats. And omega-3 foods, fatty acids, really support our brain health. Our gut and our brain are so connected. It's unbelievable. Um, there's a blood-brain barrier where it protects poisons and things from affecting the brain. But many times if we're way under stress, we're not getting enough sleep, we're not eating the right foods, our whole body is out of whack, some things can get through and it does affect our brain. So we have to be very careful that we protect that little brain up there. 
We want you to limit sugar and processed foods because they lead to energy crashes and cognitive fog. Choose nutrient-dense foods instead. Stay away from McDonald's. I know it's hard and it's convenient and it's easy, but there is nothing healthy in that food. Caffeine moderation, again, we talked about that. It really um, enhances alertness for a while, but excessive caffeine consumption leads to jitters and it worsens our brain fog. So monitor your caffeine intake. Limit your number, uh, limit your alcohol, consume alcohol in moderation, or consider periods of abstinence. Try for a week of not drinking any alcohol. Let your liver get healthy again. And a normal alcohol consumption is one drink per day or five drinks per week is considered normal. Anything over that, two or more drinks is considered starting to be a bit abusive. So you want to limit your alcohol use. Prioritize your mental mental health. This is a really big one. If you're really anxious, if you're depressed, really get some health, see a therapy, see a counselor, some, get some appropriate treatments. It's really important if you've gone through something really stressful, something really antagonizing, whatever, there are people out there that can help you. And I have a list of people. So if you want to just email me and get a list of people that I recommend, people that I've talked to, people that I've seen myself, or I know friends that have seen people, that it's really important to get yourself in order. The other thing is um, Reiki really balances our chakras. So we should look at getting some Reiki, get a massage, get uh, um, things that, you know, treat yourself well. If you like reading, go to the library, go buy a new book, do whatever it takes to really protect your mental health. Take care of yourself. You're the only one that can. Sleep hygiene, again, we've talked about that, creating a comfortable sleep environment, so a sleep schedule and avoiding stimulant, stimulating activities before you go to bed. There's some brain-boosting supplements that we recommend, such as the omega-3s, vitamin B12, kinko um, biloba, really supports cognitive function. And consult with your healthcare if you're taking any medications. But otherwise, if you go to a good whole foods or a good healthcare place where they sell vitamins, make sure that it's someone that's trained. You can talk about which ones to take. Do some mental stimuli, stimulization. It's like um, engage in some mental activities. Many people like crossword puzzles or puzzles, or I like to do the word game every day on my computer. And I also play crossword with some friends on my computer. And it's just, or learn a new skill, learn a new language, keep your mind sharp. I'm always learning something new. It's just who I am. I just have to keep learning new things. Limit your multitasking. Focus on one task at a time. Multitasking can lead to mental fatigue and decrease cognitive performance. We used to think that we sh it was good to, uh, to multitask. We're finding out it's not. Do one thing, finish it, and then start the next. And that's really hard. I have to physically put my phone away and then I can get some work done for an hour or so because otherwise, as soon as I hear a thing, I think it's something important in it. Uh, distracts me. Time management, organize your tasks and set your priorities. Use tools like a to-do list or a digital calendar, whatever works for you. I really like to-do lists. I like to cross them off when they're done. I do use my phone though for my calendar because then it tells me 20 minutes ahead what I have coming up next. If your brain fog persists and it's interfering with your daily life, um, you can Definitely schedule something with your healthcare provider and try to rule out any medical conditions. They can do some blood work and whatever, but it's it's really important that you get to the root of the cause. Again, uh, there's three roots, many branches that cause different things, and the the main ones are our gut and genetics and inflammation. And we're gonna when when we work together, we're gonna get to the bottom of all of those. You we wanna look over at your medic medical um your medication and review all of that and see if there are some side effects. We can look up your medications, you can look them up, talk to your doctor, but there's all kinds of choices. If they're causing a cognitive dysfunction with you, make sure you talk to your doctor about that. You shouldn't have that foggy brain. And again, as we said earlier, stay socially active and socially alert. It's it's amazing how that makes a difference with us when we can be with people and doing things we love and spending time with our kids or grandkids. And don't spend time with people that sap your energy or cause you stress. Pick and choose who you spend your time with. 
And if you have to spend time, you know, the joke always is you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. If there are family members that you don't get along with, don't spend as much time with them as you do with the people that you love and that you really enjoy being with. And so the, these are some sol solutions to the brain fog. Hopefully they're helpful. Try them out. Email me. Let me know if any of them work. Talk soon.